In this video, you will learn about the relationship between angles and sides and triangles. So to begin, let's talk about the connection between angles and sides in any type of triangle. In any type of triangle, the smallest angle is always across from the smallest side. And then it kind of goes in order from there. So the largest angle will be always across from the largest side. It'll be directly across from it. So based on this information, I'd like you to answer the next four questions. Pause the video here, answer the questions, and then press play to check your answers. Okay, check your answers. Just to double check, make sure you have the correct side or angle depending on the given information. So keep that in mind as you're working through these problems. And anytime it asks you about identifying the largest side or angle, just keep that relationship in mind. It's true for any type of triangle. Okay, let's just review isosceles triangles. I know we mentioned it in the last section with your wanted posters, uh, but let's just kind of review that definition because we're going to use that definition to kind of derive one of the theorems that's mentioned in this section that relates angles and sides of isosceles triangles. So our definition of an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least two congruent sides. Okay, so let's look at the diagram below. And let me just tell you that triangle ABC is isosceles with AB being congruent to BC. Okay, now let's just say we were to draw the median from the vertex angle to the base of this isosceles triangle. And we're going to call that midpoint, that intersection point, point D. What conclusions can we make about the two triangles, triangle ABD and triangle CBD? Hopefully, you recognize that those two triangles are congruent, because if BD truly is a median, then the next thing we can conclude is that AD is congruent to DC. And then we know by the reflexive property that BD is congruent to BD. So therefore, those two triangles are congruent to each other. We could even go ahead then and take it one step further and say that all the corresponding angles are also going to be congruent. So in this case, angle A would be congruent to angle C by CPCTC. Now if we think about this in any type of isosceles triangle, if we were to draw that median, will that always be the case? Will those base angles always be congruent to each other? Hopefully the answer you're thinking is yes. Regardless of what type of isosceles triangle it is, the bottom base angles will always be congruent to each other. So we just proved the two theorems relating angles and sides of isosceles triangle. The first theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles across from those sides will also be congruent. Now, will the reverse of this theorem also always be true? Yes. So we can also include that as a reason and a proof, depending on what we're given. So if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. So keep that in mind, that the reverse of this also will work. Now, based on this new theorem, we have a new way to prove that a triangle's isosceles. Up until this point, and as of the last section, we were using if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then this triangle is isosceles. But now, we can also use if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle's isosceles. The reverse of this will also be true. If a triangle's isosceles, then at least two of its angles are congruent, or its two base angles are congruent. So these are reasons that we can use in proofs. One common mistake I see with these two theorems is that people try to prove two angles in different triangles are congruent. So make sure that you're looking at angles and sides that are in the same isosceles triangle. So just be cautious of that. 
So let's take a look at some examples in the next video where we're required to apply these new theorems.